I started doing work around mental health. Um, I did an MA at Coventry, uh, 2016 to 2018. And I knew, I knew that the second year of that, I would be exploring my own uh, childhood and growing up with a father who uh, first exhibited bipolar disorder when I was about 12 and we got to visit him in, in a mental hospital. He was sectioned a number of times. And I created a, a body of work exploring my own memories and trying to understand what he'd been experiencing, talking to other people who were bipolar. And that felt very much like a journey for me. And my MA final show was a kind of, was about him, but about my memories of childhood. But also I realized towards the end of it, there were a number of pieces which were much more hopeful from my perspective, me looking away from the audience rather than um, towards them. And then at the final show, people started to come up to me and share their own experiences, either of their own personal um, mental health experiences or of those of family members or people they knew. And I realized that actually by putting my own experience out there and by portraying some of the emotions and feelings that it gave people permission. It sort of broke the ice with them to start talking about their own experience. And I realized that, you know, that it was quite a powerful tool for getting people to think and understand uh, other people's experiences of, of mental health. And there's a saying about, you know, a picture tells a thousand words, and I think genuinely, genuinely a good painting or an insightful painting can, can do that. When I, so after I'd done my MA, um, I started working with the IMH on a project talking to people who were recovering from trauma. And the objective of that had been very much around um, raising awareness and understanding of trauma. And what I started to realise was that the project was much more powerful with the individuals. And I started to get some feedback from the people I was working with that actually um, just being listened to, sharing their stories. I wasn't really interested in, in what had happened to them. It was much more about how it left them feeling, how they felt now, and the emotions they felt now. Um, and so I didn't, and I never have, and, 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 and with the paintings I'm doing for Nottingham, I, I haven't really tried to explore with, with the participants any details of, of any events or um, what might have happened to them in their childhood. I mean, those things are sort of unsaid, uh, but what I'm talking to them about much more is, is the feelings, the stories, the emotions, the pictures in their heads. And that process of just listening to them and exploring it in a slightly different way, um, where they're not seeing me as a medical person, they're not seeing me as a therapist, they're not seeing me as someone who's gonna solve their problem, actually proves to be quite therapeutic. It's almost like, because I'm not judging, and because their story is enough, um, they are able to sort of open up and trust me. And so it, it, the process is therapeutic as opposed to me being a therapist, if that makes sense. And part of that therapy is them themselves taking themselves on a journey. Um, and one of the participants who I worked with during lockdown, she said to me at the end of it, you know, thank you for taking me on a wonderful journey of self-discovery. And you kind of think, well, you know, what did I actually do? And all I did was ask a series of questions and try and represent those answers in some way and explore the emotions. But for her, that had proved to be more powerful than medication and therapy she'd had in the past. It was almost you know, just seeing herself in a new light, seeing herself uh, almost like a, you know, with a helicopter view was actually quite a powerful, powerful therapeutic or cathartic experience. So one of the people I worked with at the IMH was a, uh, she's now a professor, uh, Elvira Perez. And she said, those that donated their stories felt understood as if by translating their words into color, their sufferings diminished. Sharing alleviates pain and mental distress. So yeah, the process is, is um, it's sometimes a bit two way. So I will, I will create something and I'll share it and say, does this start to resonate? Um, and in other cases, there, there's a, uh, there was a, a woman who came to see me after the first exhibition at the IMH, and she was a, she was a poet, but she'd never shared her poetry with anybody other than, as it turned out, me. 
And it was incredibly powerful, really visceral from the heart poetry. And it was about her um, abuse as a, as a teenager. Um, and one of the things we did was revisit one of the places that she'd first been to and where, where things started to, to go wrong. Um, and the, the painting uh, I did based on that was actually of her in that place, but with some of the poetry. So that again, it was very, very emotional. I was, I was a little, I have to say, I was a little bit uh, worried about whether that was the right thing to do. And I did talk to other people and they said, you know, well, if that's what she wants and yeah, but it was a bit, yeah, I did, I did think about that at the time. Um, so yeah, it, 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 it varies. Um, and in some cases, uh, it hasn't happened, but in some cases, it might not be a painting. It's still, a, yeah, I, I, have, I have been known to make films and I have been known to do stuff with photography, so I don't know, we'll see. But, but yeah, predominantly it's a, it's, a, it's a me trying to interpret their story and turn it into something more tangible. So the first part is, is the dialogue and then the physical painting process, that again, can be very quick. So one of the paintings is based on uh, Katrina um, and it was around the idea of hope. And we talked and she was, um, she had a, an affinity to the lotus flower and the ideas of, of the lotus growing out of the modern murk and, be, and being beautiful. I painted that in a day, very quick. The idea just came straight away. Other paintings, uh, there's a lot of going backwards and forwards, there's uh, going over it. Sham was one of the first people I talked to and I had a very clear idea in my head of what the painting ought to look like, um, but I didn't know actually how to do it. And it took quite a while to get to the point where I felt I'd got the background and then the idea of it pinned down. So that's taken more work. So it, it, the painting is, is to some degree a, a function of of how quickly I get to the idea, but also how, how difficult the idea is to, to actually convey in a, in a physical sense. So normally when I finish a painting, I'm the audience, I'm the judge and whatever. With these, uh, so like Charms, I, it's not quite finished, but it's nearly there. I shared an image of this with her yesterday. And until I'd heard back from her, that it resonated with her, I didn't feel I'd done anything. So that moment, it's, it's very different, that kind of uh, that feeling of trepidation that you, you've taken someone's thoughts and ideas and emotions and you've tried to represent them and has it resonated with them or not is, is a really important point. And once you have, then you can, as you say, there's, there's a sense of, um, of warmth and um, that you've accomplished something. But there's also this, this trepidation that you're, you're taking someone's life and often things they've not shared with other people. And you've turned that into, uh, have you been a voyeur is the worry. Yeah, have, have you just, or are you doing something useful? And obviously once they come back and say, yeah, that was amazing, you've, you've captured something, the whole journey has been incredibly powerful, then you can feel some sense of, of achievement. So, and I kind of looked back and thought, okay, so, so it has been quite powerful for some people. And you think, well, so, and for different reasons, quite often. So sometimes it is just about sharing their story with someone who's listening in a non-judgmental way. Um, and I think there's a huge uh, role for peer support in, in, our, in different communities, in, you know, in the paramedics, in the police, in, in, in general in life, as a way of people sharing their stories in a non-judgmental, non-confrontational way with people who are, who are not going to question them um, and judge them. So, so that's part of it. Part of it is sometimes the actual metaphor. Um, I'm not saying the painting is, is, is irrelevant, but the, it's, it's being seen in public and it's them actually admitting and saying, owning what has happened to them and, and coming out in public. Um, it's quite a powerful step for them. Um, so different, different things, but quite a powerful Powerful, powerful process. Sometimes it's almost like it's the, the full stop on the end of a process. There was a lady called Rachel I worked with who'd had birth trauma 
And she kind of said, you know, the painting at the end enabled her to see her old self, how she felt when she'd been depressed and almost turned her into a third person, one who was both those people, but was now moving forward. So that was really, really quite moving.